guys and welcome to another video. This one we're in Sunrise Manor, Las Vegas, basically northeast, to buy this 1973 Cheyenne Super Suburban with a 454 and drive it back to Pennsylvania maybe. Right. <laughs> so me and Jen uh, in the gust man. Flew out yesterday, didn't get in till about what 1 a.m. or so and slept in. We actually got a Tesla. We, we always rent the cheapest car, but they were out of cars and they gave us a, a Tesla, so that was kind of cool. Jen, Jen's not a big fan of it. It's complicated. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still, we haven't like to Google open. how to use it. I don't even know how to open the door. We didn't know how to lock oh, it. We yeah. didn't, open you would think I would know that stuff. So I, I used to work at the shop, but I didn't do much more than <clears throat> lick and stick inspections on them. And an oil change, right? No. <laughs> oh, did he? What'd you find, boy? <laughs> it's probably poisonous. Uh, so this this is gonna be a long video. This this has been off the road since 1999. Her name is Emma. We're buying it from the sweetest lady, Lynn, who they're they're moving from this property. They just got this sold. Look at this awesome lot. I mean, imagine you moved out here. This is only uh, 25 minutes from the airport, and you get this massive lot where you could run a business. Uh, we're gonna be jumping around guys. It's kind of including a lot of our trip too. So a little bit more on the backstory. This was her father's. He bought it in 1992 because they had a, a big big old camper they wanted to pull and he needed something with power. 454. Uh, so this was the rig. He loved it very dearly. Uh, he, he worked on it himself forever and unfortunately passed away. And after that it just kind of sat. So that brings us to the present where we're gonna try to get this back on the road and drive it. Gus is digging for water over here. <laughs> what did you, usually when he's digging, there's something that he finds too. And before we tear in mechanically, let's just do a quick sweep around so you guys can check out the condition. Rust wise, she is looking really good. Uh, rubber wise, not so good. You know, every piece of rubber on this is probably dry rotted. I get a mirror. I'll go into the interior here in a second. A little bit of Ross coming out on the bottoms of the doors, but I mean for a square body, this is this is looking just minty. Yeah, let's see, crumbly. Let's get it out. The plastic all rotted out back here. We got a hitch. So in case we get a boat or a camper out here or something, you never know. I don't know about you guys, but I just love this paint scheme. It looks like rust, but it's not. It's like a copper, and if it does rust, you wouldn't even know it because, well, it's rust color. Got the roof rack on there. The wing windows, my favorite. 95 to 97 senior citizen permit. Broken glass up on the windshield. Make some phone calls. Oh man. Look at that, guys. This is why I like coming out to the desert. Dusty. 20 miles we got. So uh, we bought this just based on a picture. Price was right. Look at that. Either somebody replaced it or this doesn't have that many miles at all. Let's see if that master's locked up. Nope, it's not. Carburetor's not locked up. Parking brake pulls off and... <laughs> oh man. And she did give me a set of keys, but it looks like typical old Chevys, you don't even need the key in it, which is nice. Dashboard, there's some papers here. Hey, it looks like you threw this stuff in a fire and it just crumbles apart. I'll just put a carpet on that, no problem. Yeah, Garfield. Wow, how is that one still hanging on? Every time I put one of these mirrors on, they, they pop off after like six months, you know? Glove box came out. I'm taking a look in the back. Lots of room for activities. Looks like the tailgate was replaced at some point. HVAC vents up there. I wouldn't have thought a 70s car would have that. Truck. But yeah, I think Jen is gonna do the interior up and well, let's go, go pop the hood. Got some brake fluid. Oh, it's a steel can too. Car quest. When's the last time you see a steel can? Suburban. Let's see what year these newspapers are. 1998, December 11th, 1998. How about that? Well, that checks out with her story of 1999. Let's see, do we have a hood pop? 
Need some lube on that. I'm hoping this motor's not locked up or anything. Uh, she said it, it ran. Then the hood, these old trucks are notorious. You pull up on them, you'll crease the hood. So you pull out as you come up. They're not bad though. Yes, <laughs> that's what I like to see. Oh, uh, still unknown though. She said everything's complete, so hasn't been touched. This we will get rid of. Would you look at that? We're all complete together. You got Mickey Thompson valve covers, uh, Edelbrock. I'm just like soaking this in, guys. Obviously, I'm uh, not gonna do much of turning anything until we get some of this dust out of here. Gives you a good idea how long it's been sitting too, probably. Let's, let's pull the old dipstick, make sure that looks kosher. Of course, the whole tube wants to come out. Nice, uh, you know, black, dark oil, about in, you know, inch down, but that's that's what I'd like to see. Definitely need an oil change though. That looks, uh, let's smell that. Hey Chris, what's the width? No, uh, they are 9.5 by 16.5. Yeah, that's what I said. But we could go 10.5, we could go bigger than that, yeah. The big thing is that they're a 16 and a half inch rim, and I don't think they're gonna have a tire for that, but maybe. Well, we're gonna have to detour from under the hood because we just hit the first hiccup when I was glancing through the camera reading this. I missed the 0.5 on the end. And as you guys know, finding tires for that, these rims is, is not easy. We just actually spent like 20 minutes calling a bunch of places. Uh, it's, it's Saturday, so we're gonna try to head over some junkyards or get on Facebook and find uh, maybe Chevy Express rims or something. Those, those should fit some, some eight lugs. Uh, that's gonna be the number one priority because we gotta get this rolling. I gotta go make a run, try to get some tools, but I'm gonna see what the... We're in the early stages of our trip, guys. Uh, oh, just kind of getting broken. Let's see if we got a, a spare tire tool back here. Would be nice. Oh, these ones got sun rotted. Oh, wow. It's amazing. That's, that's what it does to your skin out here, you know? I mean, look. Oh, it's color. At one point, shot. Well, actually, the outside wasn't caught. All right, so we got some, some snow chains, it looks like. Breaker bar. Craftsman, too. I'm coming handy. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Look like Craftsman style. It's a plum. Machinist Delight right here. Let's see if maybe you had some tools like, like the screwdriver. Here we go. That's perfect. Love that it's got thick crank windows. Yes! I guess I won't put those down until we clean it. And the ashtray. Go, yeah. Uh, any Chevy hate lugs are gonna fit there, but I'm gonna take a measurement of this hub anyway. And we've tried a few places in town already. Uh, three strikes are out. This is gonna be the third one. We're on the edge of town over by the Air Force Base. Rolled up to with the Tesla, the Hughes uh, tire dealer. So somebody said this, then we'd have good luck here. Then. <laughs> Two grand and two grand. $245.70. They're all the same price if I take the other 16s or these? These ones are like $60 each. And how about the ones out there? Uh, on, on, a, on a complete set, it's a little bit more expensive, like $260 for four of them. What do you think? You like? That's what I'm saying, yeah, but this might be our only option so far. You don't like them? No. <laughs> right here. You put it on the side of the door. Oh, okay. And that's. How you lock it and unlock it. Thanks, YouTube. <laughs> Which would you take, the Celica or the Tesla? Let me know down below. I, I would take the, the Celica all day long. We gotta grab some supplies and then don't forget to tire stuff. Yeah. Brake fluid, power steering fluid, grab some Marvel Mystery Oil, can of starting fluid. Antifreeze, I think I've grabbed distilled water too. Rotella 1540. Cheap multi purpose ATF. Uh, so, what's generally in these? What, these are factory sealed by Amazon? Yes, or what? yes those are factory sealed by Amazon. <laughs> yes. Oh, right man. there. All right. Oh, you're making a video? There you yeah. go. Yeah, that'll YouTube. be fun for later. <laughs> mystery box. We stopped over to see if they have any tools, and they said, well, we sell mystery boxes. A lot of those have tools. 
Jen's like, well, what if it's everything we need? <laughs> yeah, it's all in that box. Yeah. <laughs> this is the, it's gonna solve all our problems. I, mean, I feel like we're in Vegas, so, you know, just gamble, right? <laughs> just roll the dice. I'll let Jen do the honors. And go, Gus will do the sniff inspections. This could be like clothes or something. What is it? Kids' what? toys? I see a flip flop. Oh, oh, I got a box of flip flops. Gosh, darn. Well, maybe we can pedal those oh. somewhere. Oh, wait. Are those at least your size? They are, but really? I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, guys? What's this over here? Oh, it's all shoes and flip flops. Oh, I could have. Oh. Sorry. Is this your size, though? These are 11. Oh, we'll re gift it. Alright, now we gotta store these flip flops. <laughs> Just cram it on in. Oh, fancy. Look at that. Chris unlocked a feature of the Tesla. <laughs> we need to turn the turn signal on. Now it. <laughs> Jenna hated this car until she found out it has a fart feature. <laughs> yeah, fart on turn signal. <laughs> he but did it without cute. telling me about it. So she was like, what is going on? <laughs> He's got a sweet rig. It looks like an old U-Haul or something. Can we pull up in the Tesla? Yeah! We're here for the rims. <laughs> Daniel over here hooked us up. We got some 16s now. Yeah. Uh, ch check out this rig. Did you do this yourself? You turned this into a flat batter? No, I've wanted you for 30 years and never had you uh, been able to do it. This is, the, uh, this is great. I mean, old U-Haul, he's yep. just got it. This thing's a hauler. He even still has the aluminum pull-out ramp on it. I mean, can't beat that. And you got a winch on there, too? Yep. It's awesome, winch man. Winch I put on that. Other than that, it's the way I bought it. The uh, lady lowered at 1200 I offered her 600 and she took it. Very cool. So you're a supporter of the police, too? Yes. That's what's up? Yes. My Always. Man. Hey, great meeting you guys, yep. man. Really appreciate it. Thank nice. you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. That's the rig right there. <laughs> All right, so where are we putting these rims anyway? Come on, guys, you gotta go pay. This is all you get for grass. Hey, what are you eating? Drop that. What's this? Oh, it's a chicken bone. He always finds chicken bones. This is like a luxury car for Gus. He's used to bouncing all over the place. Don't get too used to the smooth ride, buddy. It's not for too long. I am for some action. Let's see if these. Rims fit before we go pay for tires on them. <laughs> Brakes look nice. Pretty low on the pads, They're riveted. Only about four, so I'm pretty close to hitting those rivets, but looking good. And the 16s, perfect. Get it out from under me. Do you want the oil is out or? You think they're all gonna fit? Yes. <laughs> this is so stupid. Oh, we should have planned this better. Oh my god. That's it. But there is more. 16 fives or one more 16 so we can have a spare on the way home. Oh, look at that van. Old Connor line. Gotta love the desert. Where are we putting this? Here. You want a hand or no? 
Um, uh, no, I'm okay. I got this jack. Well, no, I got some good jacking stuff. I can lift it up quick. And impact, I got it all. Yeah, I mean, I'm using this on dirt. So, you know, yeah, if you got anything better than that. Then... That it? Uh, maybe a little bit more safe. That's right about right. Another inch. Hey, I'm a half inch, yep. It. My man, coming through with the power tools. Make easy work on this. Dad is an electric car that she's never driven before, so she's so it's like some turbine thing going on. She's a little sketched out because it is a little. I don't know if you guys ever drove them. They're it's a little weird. Yeah, it's like 500, 600 torque on the Hubcap High one. These guys are holding down on me. They got a floor jack too. <laughs> Roller. Oh yeah, That's nice. You got the original uh, GM rotors. I once in one of my videos I said, "Oh look at that, the rotors all gouged up because it's got the score." Yeah. And then these GM. guys all corrected me. They said, "No, that's normal." <laughs> Is all that dirt on there? Is it going to cause it to that torque right? What's that? All that dirt with the lugs? Nah, I'll be all right. Yeah, that one's off the bead too. Look, it's aired up on this side. Oh You're yeah. Good to go. Ready to go. <laughs> I can't believe these drums aren't even rusted. It's incredible. I'm not used Welcome to Welcome to Nevada. Kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, four hand torqued. Looking sharp. And Jen went and got a crate for Gus. Five bucks. Look at that. Unbeatable. Doesn't have a plastic tray, but we'll use like a, a blanket or something. Time to get going on this motor engine. Let's just finish up with our fluid check. Uh, I'd really love to hose all this off, but I don't want to make a muddy mess in her backyard. It's pretty important to clean these off if they're completely covered in dust, you know, and all that going in the brake system. Right, one chamber full, other than that, top off the empty side and we'll check for brake leaks later. Probably wheel cylinder. <laughs> About 10 inches down on the red, but we got green coolant. Up to level on the trans, brownish. Yeah, little burnt smelling actually. Makes sense, it was a towing rig. Check that later when it's running. And the power steering, get that cleaned off best I can. Yeah, empty as far as I can see, and top that off too. It would be amazing to hose this off. I still, I think we might do that before starting it, but I, I don't, I don't want to make a muddy mess back here, you know? Yeah. Looking healthy. Choke is not all the way closed. Now, in light of time, I'm going to just shoot some PB blast down in here a little bit, get her hosed. And we're not going to pull the plugs, because uh, A, I saw how much rust was on the rotors. Cylinders are going to be fine, guys. You see, normally I'd love to pull the plugs, lube the cylinders, crank it over, let that build up some oil pressure too, without any load on them. But I don't want to get all the dust in those. It's just so much dust everywhere, guys. Uh, and, and honestly, we're on a time crunch at this point. You get the red cable going negative and black cable going positive. Easy to remember. Drop in the Duralast Marine. 100 bucks, 1,000 cold cranking amps. Marine starting battery, can't beat it. Do the tap test. All right, yeah, the ignition's on. So I'm gonna leave that. Oh. That's the wipers going. Oh yeah, we got life. <laughs> brittle fuel filter wouldn't want to use that thing uh, so we'll run this line into a bottle uh, Lynn is just amazing she just gave me permission to use the garden hose and and get all this dust out of here so I'm gonna try not to make too much a mess but I just don't want to suck that all into this cranking over oh my god it's so nasty this thing's been through a few dust storms since it was last ran I 
obviously will bring it to a car wash at some point to pressure wash this, but this is, uh, this is gonna be one of these. Fuel line from the pump to the Gatorade bottle. No gas, but let's hear the first crank, what it sounds like, the compression, and if it builds up some oil pressure. All right, here we go, cranking. That's not good. You guys heard that. Not a great sound, but uh, we're not going to say the engine seized up yet. We're going to say maybe we just got a bad ground connection or hope on that anyway. After another cranking attempt, I verified we're getting hot cables. That means that starter is trying hard. So I put a uh, socket on the crank from up top. Motor is definitely locked up. And we're going to pull the spark plugs now, which of course are, you know, the boots are ripping like usual. And we'll spray some lube in those cylinders and try to get this. If we might lock out. I, I don't know. Not looking super promising, but hey, let's give it a go. Yeah, all eight cylinders, healthy dose of PB Blast. I got that pry bar uh, or breaker bar on the crank now. Moment of truth. Let's give her some. Oh, she's locked up solid. And she's pooched, as Alex likes to say. Um, I mean, we're not giving up, but while I'm cranking on this bar, I'm going to have Jen blip the ignition real quick. Go ahead and hit it once. All right, hold on, stop. I did, I felt it budge a little bit there. Sorry about the, the poor lighting, guys. Let me, again, stop. Yeah, I feel it going over a touch. It's not locked solid. I'll tell you when again, hold on. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna, I'm gonna put the JF Eggwo jump pack. Get some more juice. Oops, I almost put it on backwards because of those cables are not right. Again. Stop, stop. All right. So, all right, that time the starter didn't engage with the flywheel. Next thing we'll do is pull the torque converter plate off and get a, a bar on there and down there. But, uh, all right, go ahead. Stop. All right, yeah, it flipped over a little bit again there. Be nice to pull the dizzy out and run his reel down there and prime. What? Shine this light at that crankshaft? No. I don't think so. Yeah, it was moving when I had the bar on there. Again. Oh, oh they're taking the torque converter cover off. Which, you know, this motor's just kind of a lost cause at this point, but we don't give up easy here. I did notice she's got the Fram Extra Guard oil filter, pH 13. Maybe that's why uh, the, the crank's locked up. So I think it is the crank and not, you know, some, some stuck rings. Sorry about the bad lighting, guys. But just because we, we've got it budging a little bit, which, which is a godsend. I mean, the, the fact that it's moving at all. Whoa, hold on a second. Look at like a brand new shiny torque converter. Uh, like somebody that did the, the trans at some point and then went Baja on it. It was mud everywhere. So I'm down here budging over one tooth at a time, have a great leverage point. And, uh, well, can you see it up there moving? Oh, yeah. It's getting a little bit looser. I mean, it's, it's certainly, <laughs> you know, not good, but... Now it got tight. Oh, now it got tight. Well, against my better judgment, I kept nudging away one tooth at a time. My arm's about to fall off. Uh, and got it halfway around the world, but it loosened up a touch. It's like double. I don't know. Let's, let's give it a crank. Let's see what happens. Just uh, shine, shine the light down here. We okay. would be so lucky if this goes. Let's find out. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wow. Wow. That is awesome. By the way, so as I was nudging and, and all of this, no rust in the cylinders that I felt or could hear at all. It definitely feels like it was a tight crank. That's what it really felt like. Oh man. All right. So what I'm going to do at this point, we're going to throw some Marvel Mystery Oil in the crankcase. Get her cranking over some more. We got the lube in those cylinders, and that's what we're gonna do. We are looking for a marvel to happen, right? Is that the right word? Oh, a miracle. A miracle. <laughs> ah, same difference. It's sludgy in there. Pour half a bottle in. Is that the oil's oil's low? And we're gonna have to do it. You know, we're going we're going full bottle. We're gonna just go ham on this. <laughs> we need to do an oil change anyway, right away. If we uh, get this, there goes our marvel. Mystery, marble, marble mystery. I, I can't. It's calls for a bush latte. As, uh, who is that? Zip ties and bias plies came up with that? 
Do you, do you want to smell this? It's the best smelling stuff ever. Oh, it smells like peppermint or something. It's good, right? Yeah. Heck yeah. It reminds me of those wax lips I used to chew as a kid. You know what I'm We're about? on our third can of soup today <laughs> with this chicken sausage gumbo <laughs> progresso best stuff ever. <laughs> I didn't see the oil pressure bump at all, but at this point, I mean, I don't know, let's throw the, well, let's check for spark real quick. Yeah, crank it, you can hold it. All right, all right, no spark. Let's check for voltage over at the coil. Well, I guess let's pop the cap off, see if we got points, they're probably dirty. All right, you can turn, turn that off. I'm so happy. Yeah, it, it's getting later. It's, it's past eight. We were getting ready to pack the tools up and just kind of go enjoy the night because it's Saturday night uh, and, then, and then figure out the next step tomorrow. Now, some of you guys might be wondering right now at this point in the video, like, why the heck didn't you check the frozen engine earlier? Well, it turns out, I mean, this lady held Lynn, what a wonderful woman. She held this for us uh, without a deposit. And I promised her, I said, when I get there, I'm going to give you dollars and we're going to get it out of there, rolling out of there. And so I knew whether we got the engine running or not, I figured one way or another, uh, we'll find a buyer if the motor's blown or something else major. But, Alrighty. Oh, you know, it's like Chevy putting a distributor all the way up back. Why can't they be like Ford? Put it up front. Let's see what we got. Yeah, we got points ignition. So let's see what the cap looks like. I don't know if you guys can see in there, but it's looking decent like usual. Oh, there goes our port for setting the uh, points. Mechanical advance is good. All right, here's the points. Uh, yeah, we got some corrosion in there. So I'm gonna, we need a file or something. Or uh, Cleaned up the points with the Leatherman file. Let's see, let me see if they're uh, opening and closing. Go ahead and crank it and hold it till I say. All right. Um, well, you guys saw that. <laughs> The distributor's not spinning. And now, a quick word from the sponsor of this video, Factor and their super convenient meal plans, delivered right to your door. With Factor, skip the trip to the grocery store, skip the chopping, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. Their meals are fresh, delicious, never frozen, chef prepared, dietitian approved. I mean, seriously, when have you ever seen clean, hassle-free eating this darn convenient? You simply pop her in for two minutes, you know, slice a few holes, one button, and we're good to go. Let's check this out. Oh, yeah. The only problem with these meals is fending Jen off, because once she smells it, she moves right in, because it's that darn good. Out of here. Mmm. Give me some of that pork chop. Give me some of that pork chop. That is amazing. That is good. Mm-hmm. Even the Gus Man approves. Well, that was delicious. So if you want to get in on these healthy, convenient meals, then head to Factor75.com or use the link down below and use code NONSENSE50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. All that being said, thanks Factor very much for sponsoring the video, and now let's dive back into it. Yeah, this should be spinning. That means we have a broken timing chain, probably. Or, of course, a broken camshaft or the gear. I mean, it feels like it's, it's meshing with the gear down on the cam. So essentially the, the crankshaft spinning and then there's a chain that comes up, baby, and there's a, a chime, timing chain that connects the crank to the camshaft. And yeah, that's not spinning, so not good. Okay, yeah, the rocker's not moving. The timing chain's broken. Checking into our hotel. Jen booked us a fancy place downtown. Be nice to relax and not be sleeping in a car. Get a shower. Did you show, show them your shoes? I mean, yeah, we're pretty, pretty dusty, <laughs> dusting up the place. <laughs> we're just lucky. Huh? We got upgraded to the new tower since they were out of rooms in the old tower. We keep booking the cheap stuff and then getting upgraded <laughs> to the good stuff. This is luxury. This is nice. Sure you don't want to go sleep in the Tesla? No. <laughs> Cheers to a good day. Hopefully tomorrow's better. The next morning, we're gonna go head over, pull the time cover, see what's going on. Passing through downtown here. We're ready to tear in 
I kind of was thinking about this overnight, doing a little bit more research and such. Uh, the 454 is an interference engine, but I would think it's old 73 smog. Probably not too too likely that we bent a valve. <clears throat> so unfortunately, yeah, when that chain breaks, uh, the valve stop, and if one stays open, piston comes up, kisses it, bends the valve. We could throw a chain in there, and even if we, even if we get it running, and uh, have a couple dead holes with misfires. Don't really feel like pulling heads on this. It's not too hard to get the timing cover off, so let's tear it and see what it looks like. Just cut these belts off because they're so rotted anyway. There's no chance I'm putting those back on if we get this running good. I gotta say, I do not enjoy working with hand tools. Uh, having at least just a, a cordless ratchet, that is the best investment you can ever make as a mechanic or if you're wrenching on vehicles. It will save you so much time. Sounds good. Oh, I got a tight bolt. <sighs> Feels like it's gonna break. One of the water pump bolts going into the block. Oh no, I got it going about a quarter turn. <coughs> hmm. Excuse me. We're gonna be all right. This goes into the cooling system. So the back was just all sludged up and nasty. And as soon as I broke it free, the corrosion was stopping me, but it's back and forth, back and forth. I don't break it. There we go. Okay, we're part smooth. I gotta run over to the parts store and get a balancer puller. Just look inside the, the ports. I don't know why you can see that, but uh, oh, they're, they're a little crusty. The bypass is packed with crud. Oh, wow. The housing is completely jacked up. So, definitely got to pull a thermostat housing, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Luckily, the closest one is O'Reilly, my absolute favorite parts store. Oh, thank you, man. They had the free loaner kit in stock. Never tough. Sometimes you get these and they're all destroyed, but this one's pretty good shape, minus this one guy. There we go. The ones that slip on are much more convenient. <laughs> Something else I probably should have grabbed is a brush, wire brush to clean all this up before taking the cover off, but let's get the majority of what we can so we don't fill the engine with dirt. Oh yeah, this engine is filthy inside. And look at that. There you have it. So this chain is really, really tight. Oh my gosh. Seized up links. But uh, yeah, I guess let's go get a timing chain kit. Let's see if we can find one today. I'm sitting here inspecting the links thinking, well, I wonder if I broke this. See that one stretched out and these are already rusty where the brakes are. So this was already broken. Gotta wonder if that's why it was parked. You know, timing chain broke. But, uh, hmm. Got both the timing gears off. Was able to find the marks under the sludge. And I'm gonna bring these in because they have a couple different sets in stock. Only at Advance Auto. I tried four different places. Advance Auto was a place that has two sets, which is amazing. Only 10 minutes away. Sprockets match up good. Very excited. The challenge now is gonna be getting the timing marks lined up. Crank is not a problem, but when I spin the cam, I, it comes to a stopping point, almost like valves hitting pistons. And I have to get this notch 
to match the notch down here. After flip-flopping between the two, rotating each, I've determined it's not the valves hitting the pistons at all. I'm only getting 90 degrees rotation out of this cam. And <clears throat> it's, it's something in the valve train. Could be stuck lifters, stuck valve. Well, let's pull the valve covers off, see what that's looking like. The only good news is as I was spinning this gear back and forth 90 degrees, I saw the distributor spinning. That means those gears aren't stripped out or anything. You know, what is my luck with this rain? Like, we're in a desert. Why is it raining? <laughs> Come on, killing me. Hopefully this passes through soon. I have a feeling. Damn, fucking feeling. I feel it's gonna look nasty under here. Oh, yeah, not too bad. Rusty. How did this engine get so rusty? This one's a little rusty and crusty, but you know, that's fine. Oops. Okay, this one's really loose. Doing okay, Chris? Oh yeah, doing great. The rain has started. It's gonna get to be a play ass mess out here. I see that, yeah. <laughs> Progress. After a ton of persuasion, I've got the cam lined up. I'm gonna put the new chain sprockets on. It's funny, uh, Lynn just stopped out and was chatting with me for a little bit. She said it only rains 5% of the year out here. And uh, yeah, so I guess she said, you brought the rain with you. <laughs> she, she, she's just supposed to downpour Tuesday, Wednesday. Get right. Of course, they could use the rain out here. Fill up Lake Mead, right? For timing, you simply line up these two circle dots. We're good to go. I'm gonna crank it over now with the plugs out and see what happens. Should probably hand rotate this over, would be smart, but I'm getting to be on a time crunch, as I think I already mentioned. And uh, shouldn't have to worry about this sprocket slipping, slipping back and breaking the chain or anything. And the oil pressure started climbing since that pump's turning now. That sounded really good. Let's put the plugs in and see how many dead holes we have, if any. All eight plugs back in. Let's listen for compression. Not a great sound, but uh, it's better than no compression. So let's, I guess I'm gonna put the timing cover all together now. We'll get some fuel. Try to get some spark and see what it does. For getting these balancers on, you could beat it with a mallet or get a longer crank bolt, but that's not the right way. Luckily they had a harmonic balancer installer kit. Not that we're doing anything the right way on this job. <laughs> Only issue is I don't have a wrench, channel locks or adjustable big enough for the nut, but I'm able to back the little guy off enough, then spin this and then crank the little guy down. So that's going. And Jen just got back. Oh, big yawns from Mr. Gus, man, and a, and a nose kiss. <laughs> How was your morning? It was good. I did some editing. Yeah? Yeah. Sweet. We're making good progress on this. Getting... Yeah? Yeah, almost ready to start it up. Really? It's... You didn't start it yet? No. Yeah, what the heck? It's going to start, but it's going to have misfires probably and be clanky, but it's going to be good. Are you... <laughs> Do you think it'll start? Yes. It's just going to be noisy and clanky and have a bunch of misfires, but got that pressed on, good to go. And I'm checking for spark. Go ahead and crank it. Oh, yeah, all right, stop. Yep, we got good spark. Now, we cleaned the points yesterday. We'll leave the adjustment where it is. Now, we'll get some fuel. I don't like this at all. <laughs> where are the windshield wipers? Uh, you just push this little guy. I don't know. I don't know where the auto wipers are. I've just been hitting that, so. It'll be all right. She's gonna get us some gas. Gasoline. She, she buy, they're gonna be like, why are you buying gas on a Tesla? That's actually really funny. Yeah. Hey, gasoline forever. Let's see if the carb takes some gas. You said diesel, right? Oh, stop it. Um. Yes, it's dropping a little bit. Okay, great. Well, that means the carburetor's taking gas. Give it a little tap. And start this thing up. <laughs> Give her a I'm, shot of starting fluid. I'm so excited. Okay. A couple of 
spiders there. Well, it runs. It runs. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. You can see over on cylinder number two, we got no action on one rocker, but the rest are operating. And I mean, it's running good enough to drive it. That's the darn sure. We got no oil coming up to the top end yet either. There it is. It's on. Oh, look, you can see those push rods spin it. It's honestly sounding pretty darn good. Got to be running six, seven cylinders. Wow. Why is that pipe so tiny? Well, I didn't have the camera going, but I just gave the rocker a little hammer tap, and now she's she's tapping, she's rocking. Let's shut her down, pull the other valve cover off, check the valve train. I was just checking a firing order on it, and things seem to be a little bit mixed up. So I'm gonna rotate this and get it to the TDC on the compression stroke cylinder number one. I'm watching inside the valve cover here for the rocker to open. And we're gonna check that and then start it. I'd like to put it in gear and make sure the transmission goes into gear before we go kind of any further with this. I don't even see that intake rocker moving yet. Maybe and there's a look at the other side. Ooh, Ooh. that's not looking good. Uh, bent push rod, or it's almost like a bent stud or rocker. I, why is that not sitting on the valve? You can see it was riding on the, the side of the retainer for a while, making a uh, ring around it. Well, probably just from when we were just running it, really. And it's doing that same thing on the back one, too. Any of these doing that? Mm, no, they're all sitting on there. Flush on the valve stem. Disconnected the coil, grounded that out. I'm gonna have Jen crank it over, take a look at these. Just All right. You know, the only one not going is the intake valve. Let's hit it with a hammer. Yep, there it goes. It was just a push rod, or, or probably a lifter stuck in the bore. It went down. Amazing. Okay, I got it on the uh, fire, the number one. Now we just pull the distributor cap and wherever that rotor is pointing, that's where number one plug wire is gonna be. And then we set the rest accordingly. And sure enough, it is pointing toward number one. So now I just need to follow the rest. It should be one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. smoke out of the tailpipe hard to tell it could still be just fire I don't know it's still exhaust too but I don't know it sounds pretty good what, what do you think so I'm gonna have to clean this thing tomorrow yeah quite possibly quite possibly all right let's shut it down we don't have the water flow but again the, the blocks full of water so it'd be fine let's pop this fram filter off of here I tried getting it with my hands couldn't I'm gonna do the old uh, screwdriver trick. It's the biggest screwdriver I got. Half the t you need a really big one. I mean, but half the time I do this, it ends up tearing the filter and then you're screwed, you know? Okay, that's all the way through. Oh, it doesn't wanna go. There it goes. Budge in a little bit. 
Yes. All right, screwdriver trick worked that time. That mystery marble ran through there a good bit. We'll get some fresh oil on it now. See if any kerplunks come on out of here. Uh, yeah. Some crunchy stuff, but get rid of that old 20, 30 year old oil. We're back there. over here. Got the new filter on. I'm about to pull the thermostat housing, and we got one of those. I couldn't get a a water pump. I'm just gonna throw the old one on for now. Yeah. <laughs> We got oil coming up some of the push rods up the rockers now. And look at this, we have fuel coming from the fuel pump filling up that jug. So uh, I just did a point adjustment on it too. That's got it running much, much nicer. It's sounding good. All right, shut it down, baby. That's hitting all eight. Things are quieting down. Just turn the key to the left, or toward you. Oh, never mind, I'm sorry. I forgot I wired up the coil with positive because I was having some issues with the ignition switch and here's what we got for fuel definitely looks like some old raunchy stuff not gonna do the same thing I did the ranchero pouring it back in there uh, that was really stupid we was just kind of doing a test we'll talk about that later when we wrap up the ranchero video part two but uh, yeah I'm gonna we're kind of just hanging out drinking a couple beers I'm gonna put this pump in just take it easy get that all together get the belts on we pick those up and then when we do a long-term run we'll we'll let this uh we got to get a jug but run out all the fuel that's in the tank and then we'll we'll put good stuff in there but obviously that tank's good no rust holes or anything no because it's old and gas unlike the torino when we poured it in there in the guy's driveway and it, all the pinholes gas coming everywhere the driver's side a few of the rockers like i was showing you before they're kind of going off center and starting to ride on the rocker's actually riding on the uh, retainer, as I was showing you. So I pulled the part though and found the problem. It's these studs have a big groove in them, so allowing that to get off center. So it needs a set of studs for sure. Jen just got back from the store with some stainless steel washers. Uh, they were a little tight because they're only three eighths, but I was able to hammer a thin one onto the bottom of the stud. It cranked this down and check it out. It moved the wear. To, to this side toward the spring and long story short that is fixed for now not gonna be a problem after running the engine this rocker has not went back off center that little washer fixed the problem and now just have to do the same thing on that back jet went and got us some fuel jugs and we're pumping out we're gonna let it run for a little bit pumping all that old gas out of there so we got roughly three gallons out of this tank and then the fuel pump stopped pumping uh, I hit the bottom of the tank it sounds empty we're gonna put some freshy in we got high octane all right, that's leaking pretty bad. We got a uh, high octane 91 here. Let me get this thing out of here. Stupid, but he's old 70s cart. You know, it's like if you don't have a 90 degree funnel. How the heck do you fill the damn thing? Stupid. Doesn't make any sense. Obviously, whoever engineered this new design never used a gas can before to fill a car. Like, oh yeah, you want to fill your lawnmower? Sure, yeah, this works fine for that. Out, uh, we've also topped off the ATF. It took about three quarts to get it up to level. We're gonna find out. Uh, we were doing that idling in park. We're gonna find out if it goes in gear now. That's a, kind of a big moment. So, will it go in gear? It runs, but will it move? All right, here goes reverse. Yeah. Oh, it's moving. And forward. You guys saw that. It went in forward. You saw it did, it? it did. I thought it did. It did, yeah, it went in forward. Okay, <laughs> that doesn't mean the transmission's good, but that means it goes both directions, which is uh, means we've moved to next step, and that's going to be probably tomorrow, because I think we're going to go, we're going to go enjoy uh, a little bit of Vegas tonight, clean up this mess. Made it to our favorite spot, the Boulder Station. Let's see if they allow Gus inside. It's all pretty. Blacked out windows, they ain't gonna let Gus in. And definitely not gonna let the camera in. Oh look, they don't even have guards at the door. How about that?
Some people say you shouldn't be on trips. Leave the dog home. You don't know. We say no. <laughs> we had a nice relaxing half a morning and now heading back to the suburban for the big day. California. The big day, of course, being moving it. Very excited to see if the transmission operates and we have gears, we can drive it. He went and found the only grass patch on the property. Look at that, that's nice grass, huh, boy? You little desert dog. Wow, look at this. This uh, turns into a muddy clay mess when it rains, huh? I think I would do exactly what these people did and put down nice fine gravel on the whole thing. Good to go. Yeah. Look at that thermostat. Did grab a new one. I figured we'd pop that off then. Oh. Yeah, that's uh that's a little clogged up. I mean basically it's safe to say she would have been overheating. Probably should have done this when I had the water pump off and hosed it out. Oh well. Oh, well that's sweet. We got bigger problems. Gonna need an intake manifold. You see that? That's a hole, corroded through. You now if we filled this with water, it would just spill into the lifter valley and, and fill the engine with water. Great, <laughs> let's uh, see if we can get a manifold or fix that with something. Hmm. Just gets better and better. Did some research, made some calls. So far, no manifolds in stock anywhere. That could be fixed with JB Weld or something, but we really don't want to go down that route. Plus it has to come off anyway to clean it properly since these ports are completely blocked up. Might as well replace it. Also, I don't remember if we showed you last night, but this pump was working great, and then it started spraying out of the, the weep holes. That means the diaphragm's torn inside. I bypassed the mechanical pump right now and just wired in this little electronic guy real quick, direct to the battery. So we're gonna do the first drive and see if it actually moves before even committing any more time to this. What's going through my head right now is I, I just should have done a more thorough inspection initially, like maybe pop, pop that off. Next time I see one of these aluminum manifolds, that's the first thing I'm gonna do, because that's, that's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah, that's a victory. I would say so too. 
Alright, let me park this thing then. I would say that's a success. Okay, Ooh. so that, uh, oh, I cooled down for a second. That was good. I mean, it was real shuddery, uh, but it, it runs and drives. We might need to find another option for today, though. That smoke is just the, we, we uh, spilled some oil on the manifolds yesterday. So I don't know if this is gonna be the end of this, but we are out of our designated three days to get this running and driving. You know, we were, again, I think you said earlier, we were taking it easy, doing a little bit of vacation too, but just too many, too many. You know, this wasn't throw a battery and uh, spit shiner, change the oil and go. Just, this is gonna need a little bit more attention and possibly a transmission, but all that, uh, we, we might be revisiting this, but for now, we gotta go take a ride and try to get something else because we have to return a rental car tonight. The new Chevy Suburban. Because some people need more than a wagon. Suburban has a tough truck chassis, so you can carry up to a ton and a half of people and cargo. You can order seats for nine and still have lots of space available in back. Chevy Suburban, built to give you lasting value. Discovered autopilot. It's great. You just put it on and the car takes over. You don't have to accelerate, steer, brake. No foot on the gas. Nothing. It just does it. It's this is quite incredible. I had had no idea it was this. To apply it, check it out. We're driving right now. I hit this twice and it takes over. That's it. It took the took the steering wheel. It says please keep your hands on the wheel though. Oh, does it? It did say that. Oh, alright. Then, then that's what I'll do. 